Hey, what's up guys? This is David Kim with Algos Explained and today I'm going to bring you another algorithm question. And just to let you know before we get started, uh, you might hear things like cars honking or whatnot in the background. I have my windows open today because it's getting pretty hot. And so yeah, um, for the most part I feel like whatever happens out there, it doesn't transfer all the way to my mic. But in case it does, uh, I apologize for that in advance. And so okay, we're going to do an algorithm question on Code Wars today. And like I said, for these series, it's not like the other series that I've been doing where I solve the problem in front of you and kind of, you know, struggle with it or whatnot if there are any, if there are any curveballs. This is when I already solved it, kind of what I do on the whiteboard, but on the computer because it's uh, a lot less work and my schedule's been busier these days. So anyway, this is one. This one is in JavaScript, a level 6 one. Um, so they're generally not too difficult. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started with this. Replace with alphabet position, and so welcome. In this kata, you are required to, given a string, replace every letter with this position in the alphabet. If anything in the text isn't a letter, ignore it and don't return it. A being one, B being two. Okay, so there is no zero, because um, we know that, of course, indexes start at zero, and so that could have been a question that you might have had. And they give us an example here: alphabet position. That's the function that we have, or that we're, we're going to make. And they run in this string here, and it says um, the first one is 20. And so you might also wonder, okay, lowercase and capital. In ASCII, they are different values, but in for this one, we're going to treat the letter just as the letter itself. And so the lowercase t and the uppercase t, apparently from this, it has the same value. And so what will we do with that? We know that, uh, first of all, um, well, we're probably going to have to make it all in one one form, either all lowercase or all uppercase or whatnot. And so, before even going into this question, or before we even solve this, which is right here, you're probably already looking at it. A um, couple things we do know: uh, we're going to have to iterate. Sorry, there is a motorcycle outside, so I'll say that one more time. I I don't know when that motorcycle started, but. The important thing before we go into this question, we already know, okay, we're going to have to go through this string. We know that we're going to have to look at every single character of it and that we're going to be comparing it to an alphabet, the index of that letter in the alphabet. And so if it is A, then it's 1 because A is the first letter in the alphabet. If it's B, it's 2. And it doesn't matter if it's capitalized or lowercase. And so we do address all of that here. And I did output it and it all does pass. And so let me just walk you through the code that I created and kind of why I decided to do what I did. And so first when we started, I think we had none of that. And so it was just, to give, we were just given the function, the function name, and the parameter. They call the text that is going to be your input or the input that they give you, which is the string. So the input is a string. And I know that we're going to have to find the index of each character and in the alphabet, but we don't have an alphabet. And so what I decided to do was I created a string of alphabet myself. So pretty much, you know, just hand coding this guy in. I could use a semicolon there. And so that way we can, um, we, we know, okay, if we're looking for an A, we can use that method index of, which we do use it here later, uh, to kind of find, okay, if I have a letter A, what is that index value compared to the alphabet? And so, the next thing I have here on line 3 is an alpha nums that is an array that I'm going to start putting all these index values inside of and so it's just a place you know as I as I go through the text um, we're going to kind of uh, we're, we're gonna have to store all those values I mean you, I guess you could mutate the text and I do mutate it over here on line 5 but um, for the most part I could have even, I could have even avoided this by just doing the two lowercase on each single letter instead of that. Um, but I did this anyways just because uh, it's kind of clear. Um, it's clear that we do need this because if we have capitals like this, the capital T will not be found inside this string of lowercase uh, alphabet letters. And so we have to all set it equally to each other. And of course spaces, they won't find it. And like quotation marks, any punctuations, it won't find it within this alphabet string that we created on line 2. And so, cool. So we covered line 2, 3, and five, um, we had to lowercase this so that it can find it within the alphabet if it is a, uh, a letter, a legitimate letter. And so the next thing we do have here is the for loop. 
And this is kind of where all the magic happens, where we're going to actually use that text, um, or we'll we use it here too, but we're going to use this text now, the lowercase version of it, and we're going to iterate through every single character, and that means every single letter, every single space, every single punctuation, mark, and um, we're just going to see, okay, what is it in the alphabet? And so what I did here on line 8, I will, uh, well, what I did here was I took the index of that, um, pretty much this text, I found that character that we're iterating on, and I found, okay, where are you in the index, or what is your index in the alphabet, which is right over here that we defined here. And so if it is a letter, then it'll give us a number. If it's something else that's not inside here, it's going to give us negative 1. That's how index of works. And I decided to store the value um, here so that because we do use it multiple times. And so here we have this conditional here. If idx equals to 1 or equals to negative 1, which means whatever the character we landed on, maybe a space or a quotation mark or something like that, um, or like an apostrophe, something like that, it wasn't within our uh, string of alphabet. And so we're not going to add it into the alphanums array. Just like how you know when you see a space, um, that wasn't represented anywhere here. And maybe even look at that, that wasn't represented. And it says here, if it's not a, a letter, don't return it. And so, so that first part of the if is just checking, okay, is it even valid? Is it even a letter? And if it is not, then we just continue, which will um, skip the cells and boom, go to the next iteration of the for loop, just increment the i and check this again. If it is a letter, then that's what we're going to do over here, alpha nums. We're going to push it into this array that we have, and we're not going to just push that index, we're going to push the index plus one. And that is because, of course, if we check the index of the letter A, then what we're going to get is zero. And here it says A is one, and so we're just going to have to increment everything by one uh, when we store it in alpha nums. And so, yeah, I think this is important right here that I decided to store the uh, index of function or the, the result of that because, um, I mean, index of, I think that's a very costly method and, you know, doing less of that is better. Um, I was, initially I put it here and here. I said, hey, I'm using it twice already. Let's, why not store it in a variable? Um, just a little bit of cleanup as I was going through the code. And so lastly, we now have in our alpha nums, it's just an array of all these uh, numbers. And so they don't want an array of numbers, they want a string. Uh, it says here, should return this as a string. And so what I do is I just take that array, I join it, and I put a space in between every single character, every or every single element in that array. And so it will give us this format, kind of like the 20 uh, space because of the joining, we're, because we're joining with a space, the 8, the 5, the 19, all with spaces in between them, and pretty much that, that'll that um, that'll pretty much do it. Uh, let me run this one real quick in front of you, and boom, it all passes. Um, one thing that I don't do yet is submit it, so let's go ahead and see if it catches any other errors here. And sometimes it does, uh, surprisingly. You would submit it, and sometimes it still catches things at the final submit. But this time it didn't, um, and so everything looks like it worked, and so hopefully that helped you out. What we went over was kind of index of. That was the big method that we went over. Um, we went over iterating through a string. We went through, um, I don't know if you want to even say we, we touched, or no, I'm not going to say we touched on time complexity, but that is kind of why, or actually no, because it's two index of within the same one. Sorry. Scratch what I said about that. Um, if you guys want me to explain that later more next time, maybe in another one, um, I will. But today we didn't really touch into that too much. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, I apologize for not being consistent with my uploads. But um, yeah, there's just a couple things that are going on in my life right now. Mainly being I'm going on a camping trip. And so I'm, I'm having my workout sessions in the morning. And so I'm super tired when I come home from work. That is the main reason. Uh, but anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, if you liked it, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, Go through some other playlists that I have. Maybe it'll help you too. If not, um, I don't know. Have a good one. And I uh, hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.